Hello and welcome to episode 68 of Nintendo Therapy, a show about the latest Nintendo news and rumors, as well as a celebration of all things Nintendo. My name is Kevin, and with me this week in the paperized mushroom kingdom to talk about both Dr. Mario and Paper Mario is Sean. Hey, I'm in a box and it's made of paper. <laughs> and Harrison. And I'm thinking outside the box. There you go. Perfect. There you go. There you. And we have a shorter record time today, so we're uh, we're gonna get right into things, talk about some news, and uh, go into our our Nintendo's biggest mistakes tournament, and then um and then we'll leave our spotlight game for next week. So if you were hoping for some Dr. Mario coverage, sorry, not this time, but we'll be talking Dr. Mario next week. Uh, so let's jump into the news. Uh, Harrison, why don't you take this first story since uh, this is one that you added to the doc? Sure. Um, Nintendo acquired uh, Shiver Entertainment uh, this past week. Uh, Shiver Entertainment is a studio that most recently was in charge of doing the port of Hogwarts Legacy, which oh. was... Um, which was overall, like, I didn't play it on Switch. Um, overall, was received pretty well. But was also the port of Mortal Kombat 1, which I remember. Uh, Sean, did you play that game, Mortal Kombat 1? So my, my brother-in-law is a big Mortal Kombat guy, and he thinks it's awful, so I've never even tried it. But I, I've heard it's almost functional on Switch now. Yeah, their Switch so, ports kinda, don't have a good track record because I know the Hogwarts uh, Legacy Switch port was kind of a meme at, with with how much people were not enjoying that the that version. But but it seemed like it was pretty mixed overall. Like people were worried about it, but then because of adding fast travel, it performed. I guess maybe a little bit better. Anyways, they those were the last two. They also did Mortal Kombat Eleven. And uh, the Scribble Knots games on Switch. Uh, there's there's no accurate accurate reporting on how much they bought it for. Nintendo Dojo reported that it was for uh, 247 million, but I can't find that source anywhere. So I'll just I'll just kind of throw that in there. 100 percent of the company. Um, and in a short press release, they included, quote, uh, Nintendo aims to secure high-level resources for reporting and developing software titles. Going forward, even after it becomes a part of the Nintendo group, Shiver's focus will remain the same, continuing commissions that port and develop software for multiple platforms, including uh, Nintendo Switch. So, um, it sounds even more, even, even more that this next console is going to be a Switch successor. And um, I'm not sure. Like, even it sounds like they'll be working on ports, but could they be working on some first-party titles since, you know, Mortal Kombat and Hogwarts are pretty massive projects already? And could this mean that Nintendo is buying right now. Like, I can't even imagine what 250 million feels like to Nintendo. You know, well, also, that's, like, the actual, think of, that's the actual number. Think of, I mean, leaning a little bit into what we're going to talk about in a minute with Thousand Year Door, but like, think of like how many remakes and, and HD remasters Nintendo's been putting out. I think they've seen that it's a gold mine uh, of something that they could, you know, pass off to another studio and have those in constant rotation now rather than just oh, yeah. say like oh we've got a slow year let's do it because we have a slow year how about we do it every year regardless of if we're slow or not and uh, see if people keep buying them then do you think right. this is them kind of like stepping out ahead and being like hey basically the switch successor is more profit so we kind of know what we're doing more so, like you said, do you think it's, well, now we have this studio that can do decent ports, but say we run behind on a first-party title, we can bring them in. Do you, do you think that that's maybe the plan, and maybe this is just the beginning of them buying some studios? I I think so. I mean, just the, the craziest statement 
I think I can ever make about Nintendo is that the fact that they are the biggest company in Japan, you know, which is just so it's it's so crazy to say out loud still like they're the mm-hmm. biggest company. So chances are this is not that much money to them. And I do think it's them stepping out ahead. This is some serious foreshadowing for later. But I know Nintendo does not want to step backwards with right. their success of third party games on this new on the Switch because that was a serious problem in the previous generation before the Switch. That's both all I'll gener- say for both now. generations really the the Wii started losing third party support towards the end as well. Um, true. But, That's uh, true. Anyway, yeah, sure. yeah. I, I mean, my mind with this is, like I said, just on like availability of older games. Like, I really hope they just keep the remasters coming because, it, it, you know, I know people like to hate on when movies do do like uh, remakes and TV shows get reboots and stuff. But as far as video games go, I'm like, no, please make the games constantly available. If it's not on Nintendo Switch Online, I want it on an HD remake and just keep recycling your old stuff too so I can play it now that I'm ready. Right. Uh, so I, I think this is a possible look towards the future. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them buying up some other quote unquote small studios, like, I don't know, like less than a billion dollars. I'll say a small studio to Nintendo. I don't know. Like, you know, compared to these like $70 billion acquisitions that we see, uh, so, so yeah, like, I, I mean, I think it all points towards positives, you know, uh, the fact that they're going to take ports of their games seriously, I think, is something that it points towards. So, uh, Do you think could... they're in a better position since Microsoft's kind of had that whole debacle of shutting down the studios they bought? Well, I, that, that's a... That's a huge conversation that, you know, I think I think that more relates to just the bubble and just the the times that we're living in. And, you know, the fact that, you know, 2020 is pretty far away now. And, uh, you know, there was a time where lots of people were playing games and and also just not knowing what. Xbox really wants to do or or what what Microsoft really wants to do in the future. It seems like they just want to make their games accessible and get out of the console game altogether. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. But rolling along with the topic of uh, remakes and, and doing uh, ports of things, thousand year door came out this week, guys, like finally, finally got my hands on this game. And you know what? Of course, I was too busy to play it today. I have it on my Switch. It's there, but I wasn't able to boot it up yet. By the time people are listening to this, I probably will have played it. But um, but yeah, it, it's it's finally there, and the reviews are great. I mean, reviews you are you expecting bad reviews, right? <laughs> so no, I could, no. I could none I, of us I are mean, surprised. Yeah, I, I mean, not as a whole, you know what I mean? But like, I I could have seen like. The, the the fact that the lowest score seems to be like an 80 is, you know, pretty, pretty good. Like there could have been like some 70s thrown in there from from grumpy people, but there there aren't. So that's fantastic. That's the part that that surprises me because the the really good reviews that I read, along with like the like the 80 overall, which I think is more realistic. Uh, yeah. well, well, I don't know. I haven't played it. I haven't played it. Um, I like that a lot of them were were critical about what they could have done better, in their opinion, which are usually things that are pretty common in Nintendo games. So I, I appreciate that because it makes me want to play the game more. The fact that uh, I want to see how it compares to Mario RPG or how it compares to... The, the the older Paper Mario games, perhaps. Yeah, I'm um, so but, curious to dive into it for those exact reasons because the, I, I played Paper Mario, the first one on Nintendo 64, and then I only played a little bit of the, the Wii 
uh, one, Super, Super Paper Mario. And then I was pretty much out of the franchise until Origami King. So, um, and then, like, after the fact, I heard everyone talking about how great Thousand Year Door was, but it was too late at that point to get one uh, without paying a hundred dollars or something for a copy. So I'm so like, I'm really hyped to get in there and see where the franchise went after paper Mario, which I've played several times. Cause that game they've made available like crazy. Like it was on the Wii U. Uh, you could buy it on the virtual console there. Um, it was on Nintendo 64 obviously. And it's just like, it's a game that's more, much more available than thousand year door is. So it's so, uh, so going into your playthrough, um, because you played Origami King, correct? Yeah. So does that weigh into it at all for you? And just the fact this game's held so highly, or do you, you think you're going to be able to just go in and not let that affect your opinion? I mean, it's definitely still fresh in my mind. Origami King. I only played it like a year ago, so it's uh, it. But I I know this is from way before that, and I know it. They're almost seem like from what I can tell completely different games. So I don't think I'm even going to be thinking of origami King because the, the combat system has nothing in common. And, and I know thousand year door is more of a traditional RPG where you got turn-based combat, you're leveling up your stats, you're leveling up your characters. And um, yeah, it's, it's what everyone's wanted paper Mario to be. And they keep trying to like reinvent the wheel like literally with um with origami king where they give you a wheel for combat and everyone's just like no can we can we just have turn-based combat and you can maybe just give us different special moves or something like we don't want this part changed and you keep changing it right right uh i i saw on pretty much every review something about switches swan song or, or 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 however you would say that, right? Oh, like the um, last big release, right? Like 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 this is a game to show how far the Switch has come, and also a way to celebrate the twentieth year of this game. Um, at, okay. At the same time, so I wonder, and I wonder if that's what the legacy is going to be, because we do have like. The Luigi's Mansion game coming out, but we don't really, we don't really know. Like, is the Swan so- like? Are we going to see this as to, like? We really have to wait for the June direct, which I think yeah, exactly. down the line, uh, probably next week. I don't know. We'll talk about it off the air. <laughs> but at yeah. some point, I think we should do an episode with our June direct predictions. Um, and I, you know, everybody is saying it's probably going to be a lot of lot more remasters and remakes. So. Uh, yeah, it's crazy that that Luigi's Mansion 2 is currently like the last game we know about, and we don't know about anything else until they give us this June Direct. So the, everything's kind of on pause until that thing drops. I'm just saying now more than ever, it seems like everyone is just like moving and pushing forward because a lot of people claim that this is going to be like the legacy of this game where we're going to look back and think, Oh yeah, like thousand year door. That was like switch on the way out, but we don't know. I mean, for all we know, the next switch for all we know, the switch Two, because they said the fiscal year, the switch Two could be announced in March of 2025. I, think I don't think it will. I think when we go into the Switch 2, it's going to be a lot when we got the place. It's going to be a lot like when we got the PlayStation 2. And a lot of people, like people played PlayStation games for the first time on their PlayStation 2 because of the reverse compatibility. Yeah, and I think yeah. we're gonna, Switch 2 is just going to be more of a continuation of the Switch. There's going to be plenty of people still getting, finally getting around to playing switch titles they didn't have time for but they can do it now because the new system plays it too and um there might even be some upscaling involved which kind of goes into the next thing that i put in the notes here is data miners have discovered code for handling 4k resolution within thousand year door which the (laughs) current switch is not capable of so it's kind of interesting maybe that is you know seeded in there for a switch to um function yeah i I, I don't know 4k doesn't sell anything for me well it's not about what 
it sells. It's about the we're we're speculating on things the system can do. Right. Right. Like it doesn't like, for example, it doesn't excite me, but it's it's just kind of like pointing towards that that direction. Um, yeah, because like it's, it's saying like, hey, that this is going to be also a focus of the Switch Two is, hey, go back and play Switch games because they do st- they do this now. <laughs> uh, so what's uh what's next? Uh, yeah, yeah, what's next? I mean, we so we had two Mario RPGs that that came out within a year of each other. Paper Mario is on NSO. Um. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have Mario Luigi Superstar Saga on NSO. I mean, oh, yeah. on the Switch successor, uh, on the Switch successor, could we be seeing uh, Super Paper Mario going into more of the Wii era remakes? Uh, That's what could I'm we hoping see... for. I mean, call me could, like could... maybe I just fall for patterns, but like that's what I really yeah. want to see is just like keep going yeah. in order, keep re-releasing the Paper Mario series. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty I think it's pretty likely that on the Switch successor we just see I mean I wouldn't be surprised if we saw all three all, all four Mario and Luigi games. Like either they're released together, they're released separately. Um I would not be surprised if we get into like the Wii DS 3DS era and another big conversation that we need to have sometime when we get closer to the Switch successor. The next Switch is going to be around until like 2030. Yeah. Assuming that assuming that, you know, generations of consoles kind Oof. of kind of stay the same. And they're not <laughs> just like really it that way yet. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and like like I mean, I think and this is also for the, another big episode. I think generations of consoles as we know it are kind of going away. So, yeah, I mean, this next quote unquote successor could be 2030. And then we're looking at um, oh, what's we're looking at, like Wii U titles getting remakes, you know, like, like, like wouldn't that be crazy or wouldn't that be wouldn't it be crazy in 2030 if they were like. Mar- Mario Odyssey, you know, coming back. <laughs> yeah. Remake. <laughs> but we still know? don't have Mario Odyssey 2 yet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's going it, to get or, Mario or, or, Odyssey or, 5. Yeah, or Metroid Prime at that point. Skipping. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Prime's going to release probably within the next 18 months, right? Before everyone forgets about it. 18 or, or, or 18 years. I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, but like that's it's, it's kind of what I've been thinking about lately. Is that wow? Like I've been I've been so busy thinking about like the the next year or so or the launch, not even thinking about the legacy of like there's going to be so much in play for this next system because of how quickly things are getting made and re released and remastered. That who knows what it's going to look like in five years anyways. And I think that brings us to the main event. So for anyone who hasn't been listening, we have been running this tournament where we have been facing off one versus one Nintendo's biggest mistakes, bracket, bracket, bracket down the line until we can finally determine at the end of this tournament, what Nintendo's biggest mistake was. So we already finished the first round of battles. And we're on to round two. And kicking off round two, we've got the winner from the first bracket, (laughs) the first match we ever did, is Mortal Kombat. Nintendo deciding not to have any of the blood or gore in the game versus the newcomer, which I'll read the description of, the Wii U, just as a general concept, (laughs) as a mistake. The mar- so the mistakes included in the Wii U are the marketing in general was kind of a misstep, um, lack of third party support, uh, the tablet controller was confusing for people and also an expensive um, thing to have as a controller, and 
their first presentation to reveal the system kind of a a big failure there as well so we can talk about all of these things um does anyone have anything left to say about the mortal combat not having blood argument before we rip into the I don't Wii U? think there's really anything else to say about that so <laughs> As soon as I talk, my my choice is going to be pretty obvious. So how about you keep going, Kevin? Okay, yeah. So I just want to point out some discussion points. One, I've seen people downplay how much the name of the Wii U is responsible for its poor sales. And I've said this on the podcast before. Like, I've seen people on the internet say, like, oh, the, the name wasn't that big a deal. And I really think it was. I mean, I like I've said before, I worked in the electronic section of Target at the time, and I just had so many conversations of of with parents and with people who should have seemed like video game players, like seemed like people in the know, um, who would be like, "Can I?" They would bring up a Wii U game, and they would say, "Can I play this on my Wii?" And I'd say no, and they'd need me to explain why. And they'd be like, well, doesn't that play Wii games? And I'm like, yeah, the Wii U plays Wii games. But it was like the concept of reverse compatibility went out the window for some reason for a brief period of history. Like they weren't comprehending it plays the new games and the old games. So just because it plays the old games doesn't mean it's a Wii. So, um... So that was a conversation I remember having a lot and the marketing in general. So I don't know if everybody remembers this, but the very first presentation, their reveal, arguably one of the most important things for a new system, they kind of, they kind of had to walk back. Nintendo kind of fumbled it where they focused so much of the presentation on the controller that people thought the controller was the system and they were confused if it was a new handheld (laughs) <laughs> or if it was a a home console or what this thing was so they had right. to do they had to like damage control and put together a whole nother presentation where they explained like nope nope there's a system here and that's a controller to the system so that, whole that was the first reveal they focused what, on what the controller could do specifically right that was part of the issue it was, yeah, mainly showing off the controller, but they, they revealed it like, and they did, I will admit, they did call it the controller throughout the presentation, but because they never, if, if I remember correctly, I don't think they ever showed the system. So like people thought the controller was the system, which I mean, it being how bulky it is, it could have been. So, um, it's, it it's just was like confusing to people and, um. And speaking of that controller, one thing I just want to also throw in here, I don't see a lot of people talk about the fact that if you make your controller a tablet, that makes it a very expensive thing to replace. And I'm saying this from first hand experience Mm -hmm. about four years ago, my maybe three years ago, doesn't matter. My Wii U gamepad broke and I have been spending forever trying to replace it because to replace it is like $150 because it's a tablet <laughs> and yeah. to get, to get, um, to, to get one in new condition, um, like I wanted, um, yeah, it's like $150. You can get a whole Wii U for like 200. So it's, it's just, it, it's, it's a crazy expensive peripheral, um, f- for something to be not even a peripheral. It's, it's part of the main way you play with the system. So I'm kind of skipping so, through the presentation when they gave it, but yeah, everything is, here's the controller, here's how it interacts with the TV. Mm-hmm. And Oh yeah, yep. You're right, like there's no like, oh, here's the, the box, like here's the thing. Like, so I could definitely see where this was confusing out the gate for people. But yeah, and so doesn't this, yeah. I was just going to say, I want to make clear to anyone who's new to the podcast, I love my Wii U and still play it. I'm so happy that I don't have to use the Pro Controller anymore because I actually prefer that tablet. I love the features it has, and I finally got a new one, and I'm so happy about it. But on the grand scheme, I think we all have to admit there was some, some bad decisions going on with the Wii U. Like, there's just some, like... I think because the Wii had so much success 
Nintendo just assumed everyone was going to know what they were talking about type thing. They're going to, they're, they're all going to be following along. They all know what we're getting at here. And they didn't understand, no, you need to re-explain yourself every time you put out a new piece of technology. I'm shocked it wasn't just called the Wii 2. Yeah. Or that's a good point. Or, or just, it would have been or just, or just easy. Something. Well, because like PlayStation. People thought it was a Wii accessory. Right. And that Wii 2, maybe that would have been easier for people to get. Oh, it's the next thing. Because PlayStation's always just done a number. Because Microsoft fell into the naming trap, too, where people couldn't tell what version Xbox they were buying. But I just, I don't know. I just find it weird that it wasn't the Wii 2 or even Super Wii or, I don't know, just something simple. The next Wii system. That's what they should have called it. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah. it's something. The, 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 this this system is new. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, which is why so, I'm hoping the Switch doesn't fall in the same trap. But when so when you're talking about the presentation, doesn't that kind of lead into like, let's say, and this was not me at the time because I wasn't I wasn't playing at the time. I mean, to me. The Wii U is very confusing to me as a casual gamer. But let's say you were like hardcore gamer. You got it. You knew this was a new system. Doesn't that presentation kind of also lead into the fact that like there is a lot of other things that made this system a failure? Like I didn't write it down. Um, what well, yeah, were the other most? What, the, I, oh, go ahead. Real quick. Just real quick, what were the launch titles for Wii U? Do you know? Yeah, they were not great. Um, Zombie U, I remember, was like the big focus. Um, yeah, Zombie was, U. Nintendo Land was was like the their end. version. Nintendo Land was like their new version of like Wii Sports. I think they wanted that to be as popular because it was it was in the similar vein of let's show off all the features the tablet controller can do. The same yeah. way Wii Sports showed off everything the Wii Mote could do, right? So if, if you're if you're a hardcore gamer and you're a hardcore Nintendo gamer, aren't you looking at this and saying like, this is very underpowered? It has very little memory, and where are the first party titles, where are the third party titles? Which yeah, that's so again it, it launched really weak across the board because it, it launched had- weak and it stayed weak. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they they got like a decent game every two three months. They never put out a traditional 3D Mario, which is crazy because like why not launch with one? Um, I mean, yeah. unless you count 3D Mario 3D World as a 3D Mario, but you know what I'm saying? Like a sandbox, like a like a, a Galaxy Mario Galaxy Mario Sunshine style Mario game. Yeah. They no Zelda. No Zelda until the very end when it was too late. I remember following the development of Breath of the Wild thinking it was going to save the Wii U. Because it wasn't until like halfway into (laughs) that game's development that they announced it would also be coming to Nintendo's next system. It was like, it was a Wii U exclusive for most, I think even all the way up to the first trailer we got, it was still a Wii U exclusive. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I mean, really out of that original year i guess so rayman let this was so ubisoft were like one of the only third parties really supporting it so like rayman legends they did a really good job of integrating the tablet into the game yeah but even that they failed i was reading about that today so with rayman legends they spent a whole lot of publicity talking about how it was going to be a Wii U exclusive. And then it ended up getting delayed on the Wii U because of the tablet and ended up coming out on a bunch of other systems. And people just felt kind of lied to because it, it, it went from being a Wii U exclusive to being on the Wii U last. And, and that's what happened with a lot of the games. Cause Lego city undercover was an exclusive and that was one of the better games for the system. And again, did a good job mm-hmm. of utilizing the tablet. But now you can get that on everything. So, yeah, I guess they kind of took away that specialness of having a game you can only play on the system. Because, I mean, there's Nintendo Land and one or two other ones maybe that 
are really only Wii U specific, but I feel like yeah, they've ported everything in, in retrospect too, because so much has been brought over to the Switch, like Mario Three D right. World, and and you know so much of it. But um, yeah, so it, it's hard to put in retrospect just how much of the library, um, how much it was lacking over those years. Um, but really, when it comes down to it, and again, I love my Wii U. There's only a handful, I'd say less than 50 titles worth having a Wii U for. Um, and and that. a big part of it is because it was cut short, you know, it's life was cut short and I'm talking about people. I'm talking about people in general. I don't think like any individual will even find 50 titles. They like most won't, but, but in general, there's like 50 titles. I think we could agree upon. Okay. This, this has mass appeal, you know? Um, and the rest was just stuff from other systems ported over or, or weird gimmicky stuff, or I don't know. I, I yeah, love Nintendo like, land. It's come up a few times. I'm glad we're finally mentioning it on this podcast. It's a like yeah. that, that it was a great, great, uh, showcase for the tablet. Unfortunately, there just wasn't anything after it. Like that's, sure. that should have been like half the stuff they do in Nintendo land. None of the games on the Wii U did. It was like the developers didn't. Yeah. They wanted to ignore the tablet. They wanted to be like, okay, it's cool that you got this thing, but we're just going to keep making games the way we normally do. And well, the there's thing things. Too, the Wii U yeah. games got gimmicky almost more so than Wii games. Cause you know, like it launched with Arkham City and it just it had special armor that was only for the Wii U. Or, yeah, but then uh, they also had Arkham. What was the one after Arkham City? Arkham. Arkham Origins, that's how I played it. It, was on Ar- it also had Arkham Origins, and you notice by the time they released that one, they had given up on the, the controller, and it's, it was just the same it was on every other system. Yeah, and that was, oh. you know, like, most of the launch titles were just ports, but it had, like, one specific, like, tablet thing it did, because they had Tekken Tag Tournament 2, and it was like, well, it's mm-hmm. got Nintendo costumes, and I think that was like the difference. So I think they just did a didn't do a good job of s- selling the options on the system. So if you were somebody who had multiple systems, it's like, well, unless this is the only way I can play this, why would I get that version? Yeah. I have to say, that the subject of the Wii U, something I have to say that I think they did better than the Switch, and there's it is a short list, but. <laughs> Something I think they did better than the Switch was how they integrated their online uh, community. Yes. Like I, yes. I really miss the way like when you'd play New Super Mario Brothers, you'd when you'd walk over a level, it would put up like a, a handwritten post-it note that somebody else had written about the level where they'd be like, Oh, this is too hard, or I can't make this jump. Like things yeah, like, like that. Like what they do in uh what they do in Mario Maker. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's the one that's the one thing from like the, I would say DS, 3DS, and then Wii U that I would totally have over on, I would say, the next Switch at this point is just more community functionality. Um, and I've probably said that for like every episode for weeks now. Uh, that, 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 that's the one thing that I'm, that I'm really envious of. Um, last thing I want to say about this um, so I think it's obvious what our choice is. Um, I think it needs to be said that I think all of my favorite parts of Nintendo Switch were influenced by the failure of the Wii U. So oh, yeah. even though even though this might be one of or the biggest Nintendo mistake, 0% chance I would ever go back and want to change anything and nintendo wouldn't either because i mean they learned a lot from the wii u and the switch has been amazing amazing for third party games um they've been pretty amazing as far as the overall accessibility of their games goes and they stuck with the hybrid model which i thought was stupid but ended up being great so um yeah i Z- like no chance they would ever take this mistake away, but it's a huge mistake. I think the the biggest positive that came from it failing 
is the Switch's library because it's one of the best libraries of games ever. So, yeah. you know, a lot of the Wii U games got a second life on the Switch and, you know, all the third parties started to come back. And so I think that was like the big positive from it not doing well. So, um, I, so we're, we're yeah. all choosing. So, so we, we talked for like zero time about Mortal Kombat. But, well, I, was, um, I was about to say, so we, <laughs> we, we pretty much said our piece on Mortal Kombat, I think, in the first round. Uh, everything, every reason it was a bigger mistake than the um, the CDI fiasco. However, Mortal Kombat was just one game. Wii U was whole system. So <laughs> I don't think... Yeah. I don't think one the decision they make on any one game is ever going one game's failure is never going to be as big an impact as a whole system failure. So no. so it's it's obvious who moves on to the next round here is the Wii U. Um if you want our thoughts on Mortal Kombat having no blood go back and listen to that episode. It's uh we we matched it up against the uh Mario and Zelda CDI games. So go listen to that. I mean, um, Mortal Kombat's come back around as an unplayable mess on the Switch, so, you know. <laughs> the Wii U moves on to the next round. I was actually looking at this tournament at work today, and I have a way that I, I theorize it's going to go, but we'll see. But it when we get down to that final match, if it's the way I think it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting conversation. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Um, if you have any theories on what you think Nintendo's biggest mistake is, let us know. Uh, we're on YouTube now, so you can comment down below if that's how you're listening to us. Spotify takes comments now, or you can email us at nintendotherapypod at gmail.com. Uh, we have a Twitter. We're at Nintendo Therapy on there. We have a subreddit, Nintendo Therapy. We're all over the place, so look for us there. And next week, we'll be talking Dr. Mario and whatever Ooh. the heck else is in the news. Um, anyone have anything else to say before we ride on out? So no. correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Was there a WiiWare specific Dr. Mario game? <sighs> there could have been. <laughs> okay, because I, I, I'm trying to figure out if I imagined it. I'll figure it out by next week, but... Well, I'm just going to Google that right now. WiiWare Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario Online RX. Yes, there was. Okay. All right. Um. Yep, released in... Um, da, 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 da. yeah, yeah, so this did exist. <laughs> okay, we could talk I about it. I just wanted to make week. sure I wasn't crazy. Uh, Games Radar gave it a six out of ten. That's that's all I'm seeing in this quick skim. <laughs> all right, we'll see you all next week for some Dr. Mario. Mm-hmm.